The first half of this year have seen the waiting list for liver transplants in Singapore balloon to 57 patients, eclipsing the 55 throughout the whole of 2023. Average wait times for a liver from a diseased donor stand at over 22 months. Now, for patients with rare, life-threatening conditions, a gift of life from living donors might be their only chance for survival. For more on this, we're now joined by Professor Brian Goh from the Singapore General Hospital. Professor Goh, welcome to the program. Thank you. So for conditions such as uh, liver failure, a diseased donor liver transplant is the ideal option. Why is that so? So uh, the first main reason is because obviously with a diseased donor, you don't have to subject a healthy person to an mm. unnecessary surgery. Because to donate your liver, you need to undergo a major operation. So if you have enough disease donors, we do not have healthy people going for surgeries to give their liver. Mm. The second reason is, of course, uh, in a disease donor, you can actually obtain the entire liver. Whereas when someone is donating their liver, they only can give a portion of the liver. So in addition to the lower amount of liver volume and functioning liver you get, you also need to... Uh, the surgery is more complicated because you need to split the liver and make sure the critical structures like the blood vessels remain with the donor and the graft, the correct ones. So this uh, procedure is much more complicated. So I just want to confirm it's a diseased donor liver transplant. Yeah? So that's the ideal option here. But the average wait time uh, for a liver from a diseased donor is around 22 months. That's a long wait. How will that affect uh, a patient's chance of recovery? So uh, that depends on the how ill a patient is. So patients on our list, although they all require a transplant, some of them are critically ill, like the recent transplant we, we did, mm -hmm. where the patient actually needed a transplant within a few weeks or else she would lose her life. Mm -hmm. And some patients can actually afford the wait. But on average, about a third of our patients on the list, unfortunately, will never receive a transplant. And while waiting for it, they actually will lose their life. Okay, and you've recently had a patient with advanced primary biliary uh, cholangitis who received a transplant from a living donor who happened to be her 32-year-old son. Uh, and your team had to quicken the preparation time needed from eight weeks to just three days. Talk to us about the complexities um, of such a transplant. What were the challenges involved? So, so this lady had a, what we call acute on chronic liver failure, mm -hmm. meaning that she was on the list pretty stable. Most of them deteriorate slowly, but unfortunately for her, she developed an infection and she had a rapid deterioration. Mm -hmm. So she was actually extremely critically ill. She had four organs which had failed and was hospitalized in the ICU for several weeks. At that point in time, actually, she was not even fit for any transplant because she was just too ill. But in some of these patients, by very aggressive management in the ICU, mm -hmm. we can actually bring them to a slight improvement and, and enable them to capture this window of opportunity to undergo liver transplant. So fortunately for her, she had a son who had an appropriate liver size, which was adequate for her. And we managed to bring her condition to a level where she was able to go a emergency liver transplant. So this transplant is considered high risk because of her overall uh, critical condition. Mm. But overall, the technical aspects of the transplant are usually pretty similar, just that if they develop any complications, she may not be able to tolerate it. Uh, are there additional complications from having to take uh, the organ from a living donor? So the, the type of complications between a diseased donor and live donor is the same, mm -hmm. but the frequency of complications will be higher with a living donor because the, as you are taking only part of the liver, the structures you need to join, the vessels are all usually half the size. Okay. So the complications are a bit more frequent. Uh, what are some of the examples of diseases, conditions that SGH sees that might necessitate a liver transplant, is the situation getting worse? Okay, so commonly the type of diseases which require a liver transplant in Singapore, we divide them into one is the huge group is liver cancers. So patients with liver cancers with con concomitant liver disease, mm -hmm. many of them will require a liver transplant. And the second group is uh, patients who have chronic liver disease like this patient. And one of the increasing uh, causes of this is actually a fatty liver disease. 
So like in the West, due to changes in our diet, we are seeing an increasing uh, number of patients requiring transplant for fatty liver disease. You know, if we look at the donor liver donation rates in Singapore, Professor Goh, um, they're extremely low compared to the global average. We are looking at 3.89 per million population donated as of 2023, with a global average at around 6 per million population. I mean, what are your thoughts on the figures? How can we encourage more people to come forward and help in this area? So um, our donation rates are, I would say, decent if you look at the Asian uh, rate of donation. But if you compare it to the West, our donation rates are very low. The reason for this uh, low donation rates are due to many reasons. One of the main reasons is actually, I would say, it's a good reason. Singapore is a very safe country. We do not have a lot of uh, critical accidents, murders. So we do not have this kind of uh, young donors to donate their livers. We also actually have an opt-out system, meaning that uh, all Singapore citizens are donors unless they opt out. And the opt-out rate is actually only about 3%. Okay. But the reason we have a very low donation rate is because uh, we do not utilise another form of donation from disease donors, which is donors after cardiac death. We only use the traditional brain-dead donors. Mm -hmm. And to uh, have donation after cardiac death, you need uh, the population to voluntarily want to donate their organs. And this has to be done by increasing awareness in our local population. Definitely increase awareness. Uh, Professor Goh, thank you so much for coming in to speak with us. That was Professor Brian Goh from the Singapore General Hospital.